Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka Monoblutron, back again with another episode of 10 Minute Testing. So today we're looking at a deck that is very near and dear to my heart, that people around me have been suggesting forever, and that finally has topped. I'm talking about Vanilla Frogs, a really absolutely garbage archetype that recognizes two fundamental truths of this awful world. One, totally awesome, is far and away the best card in Paleo, and two, that traps suck. But without traps, how could a frog deck possibly compete? How indeed. Follow me into deck edit and we will discover together. So here's the list, and I assure you I meant to include every single card in here. As always, I'll give you a little explanation of the archetype, a little discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and as always, the card by card. So firstly, for those of you who don't know, Paleozoic Frog is an archetype of the past, old man. It used to use cards like Swap Frog to repeatedly barf out two-star monsters to use as fodder for Totally Awesomes. It supplemented that engine with a bevy of trap monsters called Paleozoics that had effects that were good enough to stun opponents over the course of the game. Unfortunately, as the pace of the game has accelerated, most decks have removed trap cards from their deck entirely, instead adding hand traps so they can prevent their opponents from going off on their first turn. As this has happened, the power of cards like Paleozoic Canadia and Paleozoic Dynamiscus has decreased dramatically. But how could we ever make toads consistently without these powerful traps? Now this list responds to that dilemma by cackling, rubbing its hands together, and buying out every non-eroded copy of Frog the Jam on TCG Player. We're not playing traps at all. Instead, we're playing hand traps, the vastly superior Link Monster creation tools, and seriously here, vanilla two-star water monsters. Now I picked Turupurin and Slime Toad, but the list that just top 16 in ARG picked Psychic Kappa, um, presumably to help Twitch chat with the spam. Alongside these bad boys are a couple of copies of Unexpected Die to get the party started, and three Rescue Rabbit, a one-card toad once more. Whomst among you remembers getting two Neo Aquamador and making a Bahama Shark. We're also playing a small True King Suite, since we've got a lot of vanillas that could easily clog our hand. We can destroy them with Zafiora, and then obviously we can make a True King of Calamities as well as like a super toad. Finally, the last addition to the list from yours truly is one Treeborn Frog. Sending it off a standby phase Swap Frog to a totally awesome and then summoning it for one more Link material is just a little too cheeky to pass up. So, first we've got our frogs. Three copies of Swap Frog, three copies of Dupe Frog, and two copies of Ronin Toad in the golden ratio. Next is three Slime Toad, and because I have DD Water Tower on my mind, I am playing Turupurin. Finally, we've got Treeborn Frog. After that is three copies of Rescue Rabbit, followed up by our True King package. That's two Marianime and three Barostas. Bringing up the rear is our Hand Traps and Gofu, of course. Three copies of Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, and three copies of Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, plus one Max C. For spells, we've got two Uninterrupted Die, three Scapegoat, three Dragonic Diagram, and one TK Return for, I don't know, like, grinding? Then in the extra, we've got Calamities, two copies of Totally Awesome, two Miss Starboy, one in Grisu, one Ib, one Firewall, one Decode, one Boralode, one Misses, one Proxy, and three Link Spider. So with that, let's get into the games. So our first match is up against Invoked Fluffles, a deck that I don't think will ever exist in the TCG paper, mostly because at this point I think we have a higher percent chance of getting 30,000 year old Turtle imported than Fried for Patchwork. Although, you know, Expo's been interesting so far. This is a best case scenario hand. You see we have a copy of Barostas that we can actually summon. We have a Marianne Maid that's effect we are going to get, and we have a Swap Frog as well. We kind of have our choice of the entire pie here. If we were playing under Master Rule 3, we could make a Calamities and a Toad, but we aren't, so we'll have to be satisfied with just a Calamities. We'll go ahead and activate the effect of Barostas to get ourselves a Barostas and the Barostas effect and the Marianne Maid effect. Uh, that gets Barostas to our hand and a Marianne Maid on the field. Then we'll make a Calamities, normal summon the frog to send a Treeborn Frog for next turn, and then pass it back. In draw phase, we're going to go ahead and call light. I think that's pretty good blind. Stops Ghost Ogre, I guess, and they will pass it back. We're going to draw a second copy of Ash Blossom, which is uh, kind of welcome, honestly. Uh, prevents our opponent from really doing anything. We're going to set up a Decode Talker by normal summoning one of the Ash Blossoms. Then we'll go into a totally awesome with the Ronin Totem that we've sent off of our Swap Frog afterwards. We'll attack over this guy, who of course does not get his effect, because the effect of Calamities is still in play. In standby, we'll go ahead and get ourselves a Dupe Frog. Uh, the best answer to Toy Vendor, honestly, in the format is totally awesome because they don't get the destruction effect, we'll just take it. Afterwards, we'll use Totally Awesome to get the Swap Frog back to our hand. This Ash Blossom left in our hand is going to do some work by stopping the dog, and then they'll pass it back. This is uh, basically the end of the game. We can use Swap Frog to send a copy of Swap Frog. That gets us another Ronin Toad activation. We'll go into Mistar Boy, activate Ronin Toad again for another frog, and start attacking over his completely useless Fluffle monsters. We'll do 33 to him. He'll draw, and unfortunately, he just can't deal with a Totally Awesome, and in standby, he'll go ahead and concede. 
So pretty impressive game one, but of course that really was a best case scenario hand. This is looking a little more like a worst case scenario hand. We have a copy of Gofu, which starts plays, but not a lot else. A copy of Dragonic Diagram with no True King in hand means that ugh, it's going to be a couple of turns before we can get anything started. If we can survive long enough to activate this scapegoat, uh, maybe we can win the game. But unfortunately, we're playing against Merlantians, a deck that will kill you into the sun if you stumble at all. We're going to start by making Gofu the Vague Shadow. I could go into Borload here, I think, but uh, I mean, going into Blind Borload, I think is less bad than going into blind decode talker. You don't feel like you've lost the most powerful tool you have off of your scapegoat if it gets destroyed. Our opponent's going to activate the effect of Dragoons. They always have the Neptabyss. We will go ahead and Ash Blossom so we get a little bit of value off that. We do survive so now we might actually be in this game. We of course have the Sheep Tokens and the Slime Toad should we need another piece of Link Fodder. We draw into another Ash Blossom and I don't know, maybe we can Ash Blossom them out of the game. They are going to get a couple of searches every turn but as long as we isolate what the most important one is, uh, maybe we can make this work. Our opponent is going to end on an Abyss Pike, go ahead and activate the effect of Heavy Infantry to destroy our Decode Talker, and then pass it back. We'll use Boar Loaded End Step. He's going to go ahead and Normal Summon Deep Sea Diva. That is a really good Ash target. Uh, and then afterwards go into the new Mermail Link. We will decrease the attack so we take slightly less damage, and then they'll pass it back to us. Uh, arguable whether we should have done that or not, since of course we're just going to take it with Boar Load right now, but eh, we're not really pushing for damage in any possible world anyway. We draw a third Ash Blossom, and it sucks that we're bricking, but this is basically the best case scenario of things we could brick into. We thankfully get another copy of Dragoons with the Ash Blossom, just incredible, and we will lower the attack of that sucker so that he crashes with the Mermail Link monster. We'll get in for 3,000, not lethal. I almost think about normal summoning Maxi, so it's a two-turn clock. Of course, that's terrible, but our opponent just doesn't have it. So very interesting game too. It feels like how Paleozoics used to use traps to interact with your opponent. This deck uses hand traps, which are arguably better in a vacuum. I mean, no card but Solemn does what Ash does. Our third match is going to be against Spiral, and this is a match. I've decided to include three since it is a meta deck and you're likely to see it. Of course, we don't have a sideboard put together since that will depend largely on your meta, what you expect to face, but you'll hopefully get a sense of what it feels like to be on either side of this die roll. We have won the die roll, but unfortunately have opened uh, kind of weak. Thankfully, it doesn't really matter against Spiral. Uh, these decks just throw hand traps at each other and whoever comes out on top comes out on top anyway. We're gonna set this scapegoat and pass it back. This maxi should be enough to prevent anything ridiculous from happening. Our opponent's going to activate tough and ugh, monster cards. I mean, we, we're going to have to chain the scapegoat to that. I can't imagine it's not a monster card, considering our deck is about 36 monster cards. Of course, it's Dupe Frog, which is not terrible to draw, and then they'll go ahead and end their turn. We're going to draw into said Dupe Frog. Uh, we'll go into a Link Spider, a copy of Proxy Dragon. We'll normal this Treeborn to go into a Bora Load. So now we can take this copy of Spiral Tough, attack for 19, and then in main phase 2, see if we can't destroy this set card. We do hit it, but unfortunately, it's one of the cards he wants in his graveyard, Spiral Mission Rescue. You. Our opponent's going to Foolish Burial Goods for an Assault, then use his Tough on my Tough, Calling Monster and destroying it, then Big Redding out his Tough. We're going to Maxi, but oh, there's the Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Ooh, if it had gone off, we might have won this, but at this point, we're massively unfavored. Uh, Master Plan is, of course, going to get a copy of Spiral Resort and a quick fix. They will then Normal Summon it again by Banishing Assault. At this point, the cat's out of the bag. They're going to go into a Super Agent, calling, of course, Monster Card, which they know. They'll get back a quick fix, use it to get another Big Red, use rescue to special the helix from grave get this drone to get this tough back in their hand and oh here's bore load that's going to trigger the firewall and let him normal summon tough he's going to get the bore load attack for 19 2000 and 3k so we're not dead but but uh but we're <laughs> but we're really dead now um thankfully we can ugh, i guess like barostis is not terrible and maybe we can make a tree toad as well we'll start with swap frog shenanigans setting a bunch of fodder for ronin and grave we'll go into mistar boy get back a ronin go into a second mistar boy destroy them both with barostis <laughs> just kind of bming at this point returning a copy of swap frog getting back the ronin making the swap frog sending a swap frog going into toad and uh, really just uh, dying to bore load <laughs> as expected we can't respond to its effect so there's really nothing our entire deck can do Game two, we're on the play once again, and this time we've opened a lot better. A copy of Unexpected Die that I don't expect to use, a copy of Rescue Rabbit, which is always welcome, and a Swap Frog as well. Our opponent has a Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries in their opener, but I doubt they have enough room in that extra deck for a totally awesome, so we'll just see what they call. We're going to start by normal summoning this Rescue Rabbit that prompts a Ghost Reaper, and it's Bore Load, which in a lot of ways might be worse than Toad. Uh, we're going to go ahead and special summon this Swap Frog, getting a dupe from deck and the Ronin from hand. Then we'll go into a totally awesome and a Star Boy, passing it back. So this really has to pull all of the weight in this game because we don't have any hand traps or anything like that. In standby, we're going to go ahead and get a dupe Frog. They will send a copy of Rescue. Then they'll use Tough's Effect, calling Monster. We have to take it. I mean... 
it's really excellent to have a spiral on our side of the field anyway so i'm not too beat up about it we're gonna use toad's effect but that triggers gamma and ooh, now we're gonna have to deal with an omega as well yeesh okay well they'll go ahead and attack dupe frog which gets us a copy of swap frog then pass it back that's one on assault we're going to draw into a slime toad uh it's an okay card it's fodder for the swap frog at least opponent's going to activate the effect of omega and who they don't hit barostas so we'll use barostas to banish the rescue and the assault this prevents any rescue shenanigans and then we'll just make a toad and start attacking we get in for 22 for 19 and for 18 so things are looking up our opponent has some stuff but struggling battle isn't particularly good against a totally awesome after battle phase we'll go ahead and get another copy of dupe frog and uh, this does look like it might actually be it we might walk away with this they're going to use cyframe lord omega to get a copy of slime toad so that they can get the gofu we'll take it and they'll concede so to borrow a phrase from Lithium, that all-important third and final game, our opponent, of course, on the blind second version of Spiral is allowing us to go first. Ugh, that's a little spooky. We have a Gofu in hand and uh, not much else, but maybe we can set this Ronin Toten. Our opponent elects not to Gamma, expecting that there is something a little more powerful for him to Gamma in the near future. Joke's on him, my turn sucks. We'll set the Turin Purin, uh, I don't know, for the meme value, I guess. We're going to hold off on this Ash Blossom because I really don't want to get Gamma, and I might as well just Ash Blossom the Double Helix anyway. He's going to get like eight or nine cards off of these resorts, use the effect of Drone, then use the effect of Super Agent, calling what he knows is Scapegoat on top of my deck, going into Double Helix, doing the same thing, getting Ashed, and then equipping it with a last resort and I'm like ooh. well if he hadn't equipped it with the last resort then maybe I could have gone into totally awesome but as of now I think I do have to banish the two spells on his side of the field by using the effect of Barostis we'll go ahead and get those two suckers set this copy of scapegoat and then attack uh, I think I am favored from this position uh, unless of course he does have some non bricky cards reinforcement is one of the better cards in his deck he will activate the effect of spiral super agent this allows him to destroy my set card or rather force its activation we'll get our four copies of sheep tokens right now which isn't a giant loss it was going to have to happen anyway, but ugh, the last card in his hand that's action is Quick Fix. He'll go into another double helix, and unfortunately, we're all the way out of hand traps, all the way out of interaction. Ugh, here comes the master plan. Here comes the Quick Fix once again. I mean, you've seen this before, right? <laughs> the third and final Spiral Resort as well. Yeesh. Here's Princess Sprite uh, overlaying those two, and thankfully it's not a spell, but it doesn't really matter. He's plus to infinity at this point anyway. They'll attack with the Princess Sprite, attack with the Sleeper, attack with the V-Code Talker, and then in main phase two, they will destroy a couple copies of tokens, so we don't have really anything else to do. They know the card on top of our deck is a brick, so we will go into a Link Spider and then concede. So we're back with a deck. A uh, very cool competitive series against Spiral at the end there. Just one more brick in his hand, like an assault or something, and we maybe could have walked away with it. I, these are just Johns. We were obviously massively unfavored. Uh, honestly, I like this build of the deck. I've been struggling to play Paleo for a little while now. It's just so frustrating that everyone else gets access to these cool tools that you don't. And this feels like the best version for the current metagame. I would change a couple of things, though. Um, the Vanillas are really bricky, even with Barostas. So to be honest, I would eliminate the Turu Porin or Kappas entirely. I mean, like, what are the chances you're going to draw two of them and turn off your Rescue Rabbit anyway? For three copies of Droll and Lockbird to give us a little something more against Spiral and add a couple more targets to actually activate Mary and May's effect. I'd also put in something for these unexpected die. They were just terrible. Maybe a Mathematician and a Dandelion though more likely a second Treeborn Frog or Pot of Desires or, you know, if you actually have money, struggling battles. With those changes, I think this could be a cute competitive build and the look on your opponent's face when they lose to Slime Toad will be priceless. So that's that, and that hissing sound means that the heat is coming on, so it is time to go to bed. If you want to see me play the decks I make on this show on stream, I'm on twitch.tv slash monobluetron every Tuesday and Thursday from 10 to midnight Eastern Standard Time, and if you have an idea for a deck or archetype you want me to take a look at, let me know in the comment section below and I'll do my best. Otherwise, I'll see you Monday.